Hello. Hi. Hello. Welcome to the CMS experiment. Uh, my name is Andres. My name is Sonia. So we will um, be guiding you today uh, in a virtual visit and we'll get a chance to go underground and look at some of the areas uh, downstairs. Um, we will not be able to see the detector today, unfortunately. Uh, we do have beams circulating in the LHC. So but, fortunately, uh, we have the beam. Yeah, yeah. fortunately. Um, and yeah, I think we can get started. Sonia, I don't know if you want to say about a word about yourself. Yes, okay. So first of all, I welcome everybody from my side. Uh, I'm a particle physics uh, physicist. Uh, but they say my, my path went from accelerator physics uh, to physics in space. So uh, my late, latest uh, definition could be astroparticle physicist. Uh, I also collaborate uh, uh, very often with the communication uh, service and uh, I really like to enjoy to meet uh, uh, audience uh, as in this case and today for you I will be your uh, underground guide so I will be the person going underground and uh, as Andres he said okay we we cannot enter the experimental cavern but okay I will try my best to let you enjoy the visit because I think there are many other interesting things to see, uh, even if we don't enter the cavern. Sounds good. So my name is Andres, as I mentioned. Um, I'm, uh, I've been working with CMS for a number of years now, and I'm a particle physicist. I work specifically with the measurement of luminosity, which is related to the rate of interactions uh, at CMS. So I think we can go ahead and get started. Yes, okay. And so if you want, we can start with the control room or we can go directly. Yes, okay. Uh, give me a few minutes, mm -hmm. I don't know, a few seconds uh, to wear my helmet. I already have uh, my special shoes. And uh, okay, follow me. <laughs> I leave you to Andes. Right. All right. So I think we can uh, just in the meantime, talk a little bit about DLHC and CMS. Um, so we are currently in France, uh, but of course we're in the, as we, as we, well, some people say it's the Switzer France area. So here in this picture, hopefully you notice the first thing uh, that's most evident, I would say is this yellow circle. Uh, of course, there's, it's just a representation of where the LHC tunnel is. So it's, a, it's about 27 kilometers in circumference and all of the LHC facilities are underground. So that roughly a hundred meters underground. Uh, and here you can hopefully also see that there's a white dashed line. Uh, I will try to trace it here. In fact, here you can see that France is in the foreground and Switzerland is sort of more towards the left. And you can see the border actually crosses the LHC, or maybe I should say the LHC tunnel crosses the border several times. Uh, and in fact, you see that CERN itself is located just over here. It's about 20 minutes outside of Geneva. And uh, in fact, you can see the airport just uh, at distance here and the Alps in the background. So we are here towards the left. You can see that there, it's a CMS over here. So we are in France at the moment, very close to the Jura Mountains, which is basically the vantage point from which this photo was taken. Um, so I think we can uh, sort of give you a, a depiction here of the LHC complex itself, um, or well, the CERN accelerator complex, I should say. So the LHC is the largest accelerator in the world at the moment. Uh, but in order for us to operate the LHC, we have uh, sort of three stages of acceleration. And we start, in fact, with a a humble bottle of hydrogen where we strip the electrons from the hydrogen and we accelerate them through a linear accelerator and then multiple stages uh, of acceleration. So these are, or at least some of them are synchrotrons. So we have, for example, the proton synchrotron over here. Uh, and then we have the super proton synchrotron, uh, just slightly bigger over here. And these are very historic accelerators. They were the most powerful accelerators of their time. Uh, the PS, it dates back to the early 60s, in fact. And the SPS is where we discovered the vector bosons. And we uh, 
well, uh, several physicists were awarded the Nobel Prize for their work. And again, yeah, the, the LHC tunnel. Is, okay. So yeah, the, this is part of a, of a, of a, let's say, complex at CERN of accelerators. So the LHC is not the only thing going on. There's many other smaller accelerators. And uh, yeah, maybe Sonia, I can pass it to you and you can say a word about this. Yes, uh, I thought maybe to show before the rest and then when I come back, I can show these uh, few places if you agree. So we we just go to the to the other side. I will show the big poster, the assembly hall, and then we go underground, okay? Okay, great. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. So, um, so here I'm showing a picture of the underground facilities. I mentioned uh, most of the infrastructure is all underground. Um, and so you can see that there are also multiple other experiments. So CERN itself is uh, in Meran, as I mentioned, it's about 20 minutes from Geneva. And if you don't mind, I, I yeah. put on Sonia's picture as well. Just, of just wanted you. It's also yeah, nice it, visual. Well, of course, not the not the junk bins, but uh... yeah. But uh, here you can see it's a very nice day today, and we don't hear them. We don't hear them. Um, yeah, they are they are muted. Yeah, but you can see the outside of the assembly hall here, and Sonia is going to uh, walk inside in, in a minute and show you guys what it looks like. Sonia? Andres, yeah, can ahead. you hear me? Yes. Yes, okay. So you see, nice weather here. I hope also for, for our audience, there is a nice weather. So I'm outside and uh, behind me, you can see this uh, big building where is written the name of the detector, Compact Muon Solenoid, that stands for uh, our acronym CMS. And uh, inside this uh, building that, okay, you can, I give you, uh, Okay, I'm one meter and 60, so I'm not so tall. I can be your meter here. You can see there is a huge building here. And inside we assembled the detector before bringing the detector underground. Now we enter the assembly hall and you will see how big it is. So maybe even if you will not meet, let's say the detector itself today, you can have a glimpse of the size of this detector. So follow me from this side. This is a special thing because usually, usually we don't have this external path. So you are very lucky today. So let's go here. And we are in the assembly hall. You see, it's a working place with many objects. And now I guess that the best thing I can do for you is uh, to approach this picture to show you the sides, the real sides of the detector. So I ask uh, Noemi, she's helping you, uh, me today. So to stay there and uh, I approach the picture, you will see. Look here, this is uh, real sites. Okay, so you see, Yes, I'm uh, not so tall, but however you can count how many times you can fit my my size inside the detector, the diameter. This is a building of five floors, okay? And then I know that Andres, he can explain in details uh, the inner part of the detector. I give you just, uh, let's say, a sort of a, a comparison. Uh, I'm famous here to use comparison with food, so why not to use a kebab, okay? I guess that everybody now, now knows what a kebab is. It usually is a meat, sorry, something is moving, you see? So it's a meat with a stick in the middle, okay? Now take this meat in the middle and put like that. So you have the stick going out your screen. And now this stick goes in the central part, the golden part that you see there. The stick is the LHC, okay? And what you see, here is the cross section of your kebab, okay? Then, Andres, I leave you with a nice slide to explain much better all the pieces that we have here. And uh, I'm uh, now walking on a moving floor. Uh, when there is uh, the beam, 
So we are taking data. This floor is closing a huge hole which connects directly with the experimental cavern at minus 100 meters. When there is no beam, and usually this happens between December and February every year, or sometimes we call this a short shutdown. And then we have also a long shutdown that uh, can last uh, one year or even a little bit more. Uh, this uh, floor moves back and uh, we have the hole open because we need to move material from the experimental cavern to the surface or the other way around. And in fact, maybe Noemi can show the crane and it's moving. This is why you, you heard before the sound, the siren, it's moving. Now it's moving exactly where the, the, the detector was assembled, uh, let's say between uh, 2000, 2008, more or less. And uh, it was not this crane who lowered the detector, but was an, was another crane which was installed outside this building. And uh, how did we lower this detector? Uh, take back your kebab. I, I, if I'm not wrong, uh, Andres was the lady showing you the, let's say the shape of the detector is a cylinder. Um, now the weight of this cylinder is 14,000 tons, which means if uh, you compare more or less with one car, city car, you have one ton for a city car, more or less. So I have 14,000 city cars, one on the top of the other. It's a huge uh, weight. So you cannot lower this object in one shot underground. There is no crane that can do this. So what we did, we used the typical crane coming from, uh, um, you know, uh, for, uh, for uh, ships from a harbor or Genoa, but we had also to build the detector in a very special way, which is really special because the other detector, they are, they are not built like that. Basically it's a Lego. So you have your stick here and you fill your stick with many, uh, discs okay we call these wheels so we lower that here in this big hole one wheel one disc per time okay and uh, one one wheel one disc the weight is more or less let's say two thousand tons is always uh, a huge weight but is much less than fourteen thousand this is uh, uh, what I would like to say here Andres I think you can continue now with the description and then and I will uh, ask you back the uh, to talk when I'm entering the experimental sign uh, site. Fine to you. Great, thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Okay, so I think I'll take just uh, a second and mention uh, CMS in context, right? So at the OHC we have four main experiments or detectors, and these are also collaborations. So the CMS detector. Uh, as Sonia mentioned, it is very heavy. It's 14,000 tons. And I don't know if you could you know, determine exactly the height of the detector, but it is 15 meters tall. Uh, but just to give you some context, the Atlas detector is much bigger. So we're talking on the order of 45 meters tall, if I recall correctly, but it is half as heavy. So, and just to even uh, provide some, some comparison, um, the Atlas detector is about as heavy as the Eiffel Tower, and CMS is twice as heavy as the Eiffel Tower. But these detectors are otherwise, they have similar goals, or they, they study similar processes. Uh, we have two other detectors, the Elise detector here in the bottom left. Uh, the Elise detector is uh, focused on the study of heavy ion collisions. So more or less every year towards, uh, let's say November, we circulate, uh, the, we circulate lead ions. So we take lead atoms, we remove all of the pro all of the electrons, and the the nucleus of these lead ions are circulated, and we collide uh, these. So Elise is specifically looking at those interactions, 
Uh, and then we have LHCB. LHCB is also a, a more dedicated experiment, and they look at what we call flavor physics. They study the symmetries in the the physics uh, theories that we have for the uh, and the standard model specifically. Okay, so let's see if I can switch. So I'll wait until uh, Sonia's underground, but I'll skip a little bit ahead here. Andres, oh, actually, Sonia's ready to go. Sonia, please go ahead. Uh, yeah, okay, I'm just uh, close to the door to enter, and then, uh, okay, I describe the path to the elevator, and then I give you back the, the line. So uh, I have here my uh, CERN badge, and then I have my dosimeter, personal dosimeter. Sometimes you need another stuff too. So these are all stuff for the safety. Um, and uh, you will see, I will point, I will stress this point because I think that when you work, you, you need to work in an experimental place. You really need to take care, first of all, of safety, and then you can do your job. Now to enter inside, I will use my uh, dosimeter and I will be recognized here. And then I step in this door. This door has three checks. One check, no, I mean, she's showing you. There is a square here made of uh, uh, yellow dots and basically is a sort of scale. Let's say uh, it's not giving my weight, but is recognizing I'm a human, I'm a person because it's a, this is a door for people to enter, it's not for material. You will see in a while a material, the, the door for the material. And then we have another check because uh, I could decide to bring some material through this door, for example, with a backpack or something else, but there are infrared beams that are checking that uh, I have nothing on me. So otherwise I cannot enter. And the third check, which is the most important is the personal uh, recognition which is not only for the with the dosimeter, but is this one, is this machine. This is the iris check. So the biometrical check, which means that is reading my iris that once I, let's say I registered, I recorded on the serve, uh, on the CERN database. And so I will be uh, personally recognized. And uh, only if I pass these three checks, I can enter. So let's see if it works. Cross your fingers. Sometimes the system is refusing us. I step in, I wait the door closing back to me, and then I turn and I scan my iris. It's fine. I'm in. So now I wait for Noemi uh, to enter. She will do exactly the same. Uh, she has also, I would say, the camera. Uh, you should be really very good in uh, how to say, I don't want to say cheating the system. Yes, in fact, the system was uh, <laughs> clever today. She was uh, refused. So she has to do again because it's not easy to pass the door uh, when you have objects, I told you. So let's see now. Should be okay now. Yes. If the door behind you closes, this means everything is fine, usually. Okay, she should be okay. Yes, we enter here. So we are still on surface, but already, let's say, in the uh, experimental area. We have uh, other doors uh, for people here, as you see, other two with the same system working. And then, okay, we have... Uh, I cannot show you inside, but however, here we have the material. Okay, this is the door for the material. Only to enter with the material, we should use this door. In front of this blue door, there is the elevator. Uh, now, uh, I will enter the elevator. You will see is at minus three. We have three levels, minus, minus one, minus two, and minus three. You can see below the, the deepness in meters. And... Uh, I will wait to step in and then I will leave uh, again the floor to undress because uh, the connection stops at a certain point. So I will uh, come back as I will be underground. So let's just wait to show you 
the elevator, which is a big elevator, can fit uh, between, uh, let's say, 30 people for sure, even more sometimes. Maybe I can ask Noemi to, to show on the floor what we still get from the COVID time. We have uh, some uh, footprints <laughs> of uh, the positions uh, because we were doing, in any case, we were running the visit, but of course with a lower uh, number of people. So here a blood elevator. So you see underground the steps. It was allowed only four people plus the guide. Okay, so uh, we go to minus two, which is minus, more or less minus 90 meters. Uh, this is minus one, minus 80, and this is minus 100. Okay, I push this and I leave the floor to Andres. Okay, thank you, Sonia. Thank you. Okay, so we will lose uh, Sonia and Noemi in just a second. Um, and maybe during this time, I can show you guys an illustration of the CMS detector. Uh, so here you can hopefully see a slice of the CMS detector. Uh, so what that means is the particles, the protons will be going into the page and exiting out of the page, and they would collide here at the center. So when this happens, we can have particles that are produced in the aftermath of these proton collisions. And I'll give you an example. So I have a particle that I'm sure most of you know about is the electron. And the electron shows up in different parts of our detector. You can hopefully see from this animation that there are this, these red uh, tracks, as we call them. Uh, in fact, what happens is that we have hits that show up in the silicon sensors uh, that are part of the tracking system. This, that's the innermost part of our detector. And you will hopefully see as well, I can try to make this slightly bigger, that there is uh, in this green disk, there are these uh, deposits of energy there. So we also see a signal as well there. One other thing that I want to highlight is the fact that the, the trajectory of the particle is curved. So the reason for this curve is because it's the electron is a charged particle, so it has electrical charge, and we have a very, very big and powerful magnet in CMS. Uh, you can see here where it says superconducting. This corresponds to a superconducting magnet, a superconducting solenoid. And it is six, meter, six meters in inner diameter, and it produces 3.8 Tesla when we inject 18,000 amperes of current into this magnet. So it's very, very powerful. And the, the reason for this is that the amount of curvature in the trajectory of the particles tells us about their momentum. So you can imagine that if a particle carries a lot of momentum, it will go nearly straight. It's not going to be affected very much by the magnetic field. Uh, so we also want to have the most powerful uh, magnet that we can have. So I will also show a second particle that you may not be as familiar with, and that is the muon. The muon is a heavier version of the, pro of the electron. And you can see that the muon, since it carries more momentum, it's a heavier particle, it couldn't actually puncture through the, all these calorimeters, the, the yellow and the green. So these are very dense uh, uh, parts of the detector, but the muon manages to, uh, to puncture through, and it also punctures through the magnet, and it reaches the, the outermost parts of our detector, which are the muon systems. And in the muon systems, we have these red uh, sections, and these are actually stainless steel. The reason we have these is to amplify or to uh, reinforce the magnetic field that's produced by the magnet. So outside of the, of the solenoid of the cylinder uh, of the magnet itself, we, have, we still generate two Tesla, which is uh, still a very strong magnetic field that uh, bends the trajectory of the muons, and that allows us to get a, a good idea of the momentum of the particles. So maybe Andres? we can check with Sonia, yes? Yes, I'm here, Andres. Can you hear me? Of course, yeah. 
Uh, yeah, okay. So I know that you uh, working directly to CMS, you cannot advertise CMS, but we should say that, uh, okay, CMS not only has the record to have been uh, assembled on surface uh, totally differently from the other detectors uh, at CERN, but uh, also what you were mentioning, the fact that is with the one magnet in the center is uh, is using uh, is, as the inner magnetic field and the outer magnetic field from the magnet. So uh, how to say it's optimizing one magnet, two magnetic fields for measurements, which is a really good uh, feature. Uh, other detectors, uh, they need more magnets, a few magnets to do the same job, even if uh, in another way. Now, okay, just to comment this, because I can, I'm allowed to do this because I'm not directly from CMS. However, where are where uh, uh, we are. We are just out from the elevator. Okay, I can open it again. It's still here. So you see, uh, and this is uh, a safety uh, place before entering the real experimental part. What I mean is that if there is any issue here, what can be? Okay, we you will see electronics so very easily. There could be fire or smoke or we are also using gases, you can have gas leakage. Uh, so there could be an issue. So we have systems that, that are checking continuously. So an evacuation alarm can be um, started and we have to move up to evacuate. Um, the, it's guaranteed that the, detect, uh, the, the elevator is uh, working, but who knows? Sometimes uh, there could be an issue, also, or simply we have to wait because many people is here queuing to take the elevator up, and so we can wait here. Uh, here, there is a the air is pumped outside, is overpressurized. This means that whatever is uh, out from these fire doors, there are fire doors here on the other side, cannot enter. So we can uh, simply wait. Uh, it's very safe, and this is one of the feature we have here. Now I go in, I open the, the door, you see, very heavy door. And okay, I have the chance to show you uh, the minus 100. We cannot access the minus 100. I remind you, we are at minus 90. Uh, you can maybe have a glimpse of this, uh, of the floor just below. There is also a yellow structure. Um, and uh, you see that you should be able to see a, a, a let's say a dark gray wall uh, against uh, the other walls that are white. This uh, dark uh, dark gray wall, uh, when there is no beam, uh, is removed. Uh, the thickness uh, is not a wall to be to be uh, honest. Uh, is uh, the thickness of this uh, that you see as a wall is uh, seven meters, which is uh, basically the separation between uh, the place I am, which is called the, the uh, service cavern, and the external, uh, the experimental uh, cavern, which is on the other side of this uh, of this uh, wall. Okay, yes, yeah, so you can see, in fact, uh, with uh, with the picture. So what I'm uh, what uh, I'm I don't know if somebody with a mouse can show where I am in this moment. So you see in the lower part, yes, exactly. I'm close to this uh, big hole, um, and uh, the, this, uh, the 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 other cavern, the experimental cavern, is the one that you see on the top. Okay, and uh, in between there is uh, this uh, connection that now, of course, is closed because we have the beam inside. Maybe Noemi sh can show you also the surface. Uh, you should be able to see uh, a lighter, a lighter square on the top, which uh, is just to tell you that I'm really at minus ninety meters. <laughs> okay. I'm not just cheating. I hope you that you can see this. And then, okay, uh, we can go now. Why we are at minus 90? Because this is the middle level. And when we can enter the, 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 the experimental cavern, we just fit in the middle of the, of the detector, which means also where 
the LHC, so the, the stick of the kebab is, okay? So it's the best view. We have a nice balcony. Now, uh, Andres knows better than me that this room, uh, which is called the, the county room, is the plenty of electronics, is very noisy for me. You will, you will not uh, listen to any noise, but it's very noisy for me. Um, we have uh, not only this one, we have another on the top here, and uh, Another is on the other side of this uh, long service cavern. Uh, we will go through. Uh, I will not. I, I don't want to talk too much here because it's really not easy to talk. But uh, I can leave uh, Andres to explain uh, to give uh, some information about uh, the the trigger, the brain of the detector, and uh, I will just indicate optical fibers cables and maybe a nice wall that I really like to see, I think is the Mona Lisa of the cabling. I will try to show you. Let's go. Follow me. Okay. Thank you, Sonia. I will take over yeah. and, and try to narrate as you go along. So as Sonia was saying, in this room, we have a lot of electronics and services for the detector. And it's also one of the places that we can show you uh, during these virtual visits. So here you can see some of the fancy cabling that Sonia was talking about. Uh, so normally in a visit, you would not be able to see the, this part of uh, our underground areas. So cable management is uh, one of the things that we, of course, try to excel at. It, it, it's one of the things that you know shows you the attention to detail, but also the level of complexity that, that is involved in these uh, detectors. So we have a lot of electronics and we have many, uh, the, what you're looking at is mostly fiber optics. These are signals that are produced in the detector and are being read out by these electronic boards. And Sonia mentioned the trigger. So the trigger is uh, our filtering system, if you will. Uh, so the, we don't, uh, we're not able to capture every single interaction that occurs in our detector. It simply is too much. Uh, so every time we record an interaction, that it represents something like a handful of megabytes. So it's uh, around the size of a digital photo. And uh, that said, we can take up to 25, sorry, 40 million photos per second or captures per second. So th these are, that corresponds to every 25 nanoseconds, we may have a collision. And okay. This uh, is unsustainable. We cannot record all this data. So we have to design a system to filter the or select the events that uh, we consider interesting. Uh, Andres, so this, yes, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, no, just I will try to talk just for a while. Uh, be, sorry to interrupt you. As I'm closer to this uh, arrangement of cables, so you see, I wanted to show uh, people uh, the beauty, I don't know how to say it. So the regularity, so it's not just that you connect things. You have also to, you see, to bend in a, in a, in a, a following the cable, you have to map the, the cables uh, with uh, the connectors. Uh, you have to put them together. You see the arrangement, this takes hours of work and uh, these make us, us able, as uh, Andres said correctly, that if there is any issue, because it's a very complex system, we know exactly where we have to go. And we can find, uh, I would say, easily where the problem is and solve it. So I stop myself. Cont please continue. All right. Thanks, Sonia. Yeah. So if you look around in this room, you will find uh, many other services. It's not just fiber optics, but we have uh, low voltage and high voltage power supplies and their associated cabling. We have infrastructure that it has to do with many other services that have to do with the way we regulate the temperature of the detector. Uh, here you can see these are high voltage cables for the RPCs, the resistive plate chambers. Sonia, no, I the high voltage is on. Be careful because these are live wires. You can yes. see that it says uh, I... high voltage. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This... We know it's a, it's very, it's very. <laughs> we have to be very, very careful here. And this so, is my Mona Lisa. <laughs> you see, yeah, each of these is, is carrying one. two to three kilovolts, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yes. Like we have here. 
we can also, you see? Okay. I think we, 12, yeah. we can uh, step back. I asked Noemi to step back. Okay, and you see the safety? Everything is closed. Okay, I go under. I go on the other side, Andres. You can continue, please. Okay, so uh, maybe this would be a good point as Sonia is just moving uh, to the yeah. So maybe it's a good uh, time for questions. Mm -hmm. If there are any questions from outside, please let us know. Questions. Let me check. If um, I have a question about the letter magnetic field under there. I remember uh, that I saw a video and also when I was visiting there that depending on what you have on your hands or what you're wearing, things can get stick to, like it can stick to uh, some parts there because of the magnetic field. Is it something that we can see there now or you need to go somewhere else? Yeah, so Sonia will demonstrate very shortly, uh, but yeah, we'll be able to it is noticeable. Sonia will demonstrate. Yep. Yes, we have a special six. We have special six. Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you. Okay, yeah. So, uh, do you want to, me to continue? Go ahead, Sonia. Okay, so uh, I'm at the end of the service cavern. Okay, the service cavern, as we have seen, there is electronics on the other side, there are tanks, uh, there are many things. Let's say that uh, the service cavern, the name said itself, is to serve the experimental cavern. And uh, we have uh, here another connection, which is uh, through this corridor. Uh, it's a bit, uh, a little bit longer. You will see a certain point. So we do not access directly from here to the experimental cavern, but it's quite close from here. Now, why I stop here? Because uh, this is a nice place where you can see the shape, half of the shape, let's say, of the LHC tunnel, more or less. Why? Because uh, opening this door, you go to the LHC. Uh, however, this door has not been uh, put here to go to the LHC because for us it's just a second escape path. I told you that I, I would have talked many times about the safety. So in case we cannot use the path that I followed to come here, so to go back, as I hope I will do in a, um, a few minutes, we can open this door and go on the other side. Of course, uh, we should pay attention to something. And what? That the issue could come from the other side of this door. How can we know that, uh, that it's safe to go? Because uh, on, the, on the door, all around the door, there, there, are, there is a strip of LEDs. And if they are white when there is the evacuation alarm, uh, and there is also, of course, an indicator, uh, we can go. Otherwise, if they are red, then there is the indicator blinking, means that we cannot go because the issue is coming from here. If uh, it's uh, clear, there is the green light to go here, but uh, I still have the path that I've followed now, I will, in any case, not, I, wa I want to open this door uh, and I will uh, use uh, the, let's say, the classical path. Now, uh, I think uh, we, we can start with the demonstration that was asked. Today, I have a special thing with, uh, for you because uh, usually I have, uh, you know, my personal uh, detector. It, this is a very, this is a very expensive detector. Let me see what it is. No, you know, it's, uh, I have many of them. So one is here. Now it's already prepared. And I mean, she's always, uh, she's a, uh, just supporting me. So you see, this is a very expensive detector. I'm trying to make you laughing, okay? You see? But today I have another thing. So just let me do like that. I have my small bag. I have also this one, you see? Because uh, I thought that maybe on the camera, this would be better if I can. Uh, it's much better. I have a confirmation, but I'm sorry now. Uh, there is something uh, going uh, 
bad in that way. What happens here? I don't know. Ha, ha, ha. You see, this is uh, the beauty of the live, live uh, streaming. You see? Uh, it was okay since uh, two minutes ago. Okay, I have this one. Now, what I don't know, if the two, they are sensitive to the magnetic field in the same way. So let's see now, we will try. You see here, they are completely free. Let's see if I can detect the magnetic field. Just follow me. I will try to see, or maybe I will do like that, okay? Follow me. What you should see is that at a certain point, the clips, they bent. And you see there is one which is a much sensitive, even if uh, even the colored one starts. You see? What do you think, Noemi? I keep just the colored one or this is better? Which one? Okay, so I remove this one. I will use for another thing. So you see here, so what we are feeling here is the magnetic field, or better, the fringe magnetic field that we have inside. Uh, Andres told you that we have a very uh, intense magnetic field inside, uh, and we try to keep the magnetic field all around the detector. Uh, but of course, we are not good 100% because it is not possible to do so. Some magnetic field still you can feel uh, the magnetic field is still here. We are more or less, at, I would say something as 30 meters from the detector, something like that. Let's say that if I could make this wall transparent as a, if there would have been glass, you would have seen this picture, okay? And so we are more or less uh, something as 20, 30 meters from this part. And so the magnetic field, which is supposed we try to keep all around the detector, comes here. And this is what you feel here, OK? Uh, I don't know why we are missing one light here. Yes, OK, we don't have one light. Now, let me see if I can do something. I can play with these keeps. Uh, it's always an experiment, you, you see? Let's see if now I can this, OK. Yes, you see, this is uh, just to show you because uh, now it's really curious because uh, this wall is not no magnetic, but the screws they are. And so I can do this exercise, you see, uh, which is uh, a balancing uh, between the, of course, uh, the gravitational force, so it's not going down. And then uh, we have the magnetic force here. And uh, if I put in oscillation, I get an elastic force, okay? Uh, I always tell people that if uh, they could uh, do what I'm doing now, you can really feel uh, under your finger that the chain is pushing the, the, the fingers up, okay? This is something that we can do. Uh, if you don't like this, uh, a uh, swing magnetic field that we can just do a classical pendulum, okay? Oh, you see, oh, it's uh, new stuff. I had to pay attention, not to be wrong. Okay, let's see if it works. Not sure. Did you see, this is too heavy. This one, maybe you can see because now it's bright. This is uh, the right length. I can do also this, you see? Uh, there are other things that I can do. For example, let's see if I can show you this that you can recognize. Okay, we use my telephone. Oh, you will see there is uh, the clock, okay? But I think it should be better to see. You see the clip moving and just rotating. This is a compass, you see? And now, okay, what is curious is that, okay, I can, you see, it's aligned, this uh, compass. I can move uh, 180 degrees back and it, it aligns, you see. But if I try to move 90 degrees with respect to this position, it wants to stay, you see. It's not because of me. I don't know, I, I'm just setting an alarm. I hope I'm not putting anything at 3 a.m. Okay, just the white I prefer, you see? And this is because this clip 
is uh, showing us uh, the line of the magnetic field. You see, as I move, uh, the clip changes the position, which means that the line of the magnetic field, uh, they are moving here. They are changing their direction. The last thing that I would like to show you is uh, something on the ground. And for this, uh, I brought a box of clips today. Let's see if they work. Otherwise, I will use uh, the standard one. Let's see what happens. Oh, you see already? Look here. Very nice. You see? This is totally new for me. Eh? You see? I never tried. You see? Uh, this is, for me, is uh, when you can play with physics. You can not, not only do measurements, but you can also play. Let's see now. It happened to me once that all this uh, was uh, the equivalent of this box uh, dropped on the ground. And what I saw was this. You see? Now you could say, ah, okay, easy. You are on the metal, but this happens also here. Here we, there is concrete and of course there should be some metal too. And then it depends where you are because there are parts where it doesn't work, okay? But you can, we can continue. Okay, you see, I'm from Italy, sorry. This is the Italian flag. <laughs> I didn't do, I didn't do by, on purpose. Okay, let's try to see, look. I'm not touching, you see, but I can move the clips because of the magnetic field. They are magnetized. Sorry, Sonia, so that's I... Hungarian yeah. flag. Pardon? Ah, it's also, Sonia. yes, okay. <laughs> yes, no, no, the Hungarian, uh, no, just a moment. I don't have oranges. Okay, I know, but uh, so not, uh, I don't have light red. Okay, I'm sorry. So, okay. No, we are fine. We, we... we are fine. Red, white, uh, green, Hungarian flag yeah. as well. Uh, the the order is the difference. In that way, yes. Okay, I know. You want, okay, you want my flag like that. Okay, maybe. You can also place the yellow besides the green. Then we also have. Yes, Brazil. okay. Yes, exactly. Brazil. Let's do this. Yes, you are right. You see? And so let's play with the, this. You see? There is also another color, Brazil. This is just a. Uh, uh, yellow and uh, green. There is also some black for the for the for the blue pictures. And white. Blue and blue also. Yes, and white. And white. Okay, let's do this. Why not? You see? Okay, I don't know if the order is correct, but however, I cannot do the picture. And now, okay, somebody told me, okay, you can just take. Collect the clips like that. Now, with this, uh, it's not so easy to take because they are a little bit weaker than uh, the other one. Uh, but however, maybe I can do. Uh, doesn't work too much with this. Okay, maybe I can do with the normal one just to show you what you can do. This uh, we can do. I don't know if uh, with uh, some lights uh, we can uh, show this. Uh, you see? We, you can see in the in this case you can see the the shadow maybe just taking some others uh, free you see yes okay yes and then okay I can take one a bigger one. No, because they are, uh, there is the plastic. I, I guess uh, there is a sort of shielding. If uh, here we can see, oh, you see, I can take them. And what is nice uh, is that if I move now around, uh, these uh, clips that you use, they are sticking together, they can drop. So I can understand that the magnetic field is weaker. For example, I don't know. Let's go around. Let's see where it's weaker. A certain, you see, that drops down. So it means that here the magnetic field is weaker than where I was before. So now you see, you can see this as a game, just playing. But I would like to tell you something. Uh, 
Sonia, if can I... I just interrupt for a moment? Yes. I yes. just want to give you a heads up here because in this area, uh, some classes are over, so we have a break. So just for you to know yeah. that there will be some students come in and go in because uh, they have this 15 minutes break here. Okay. But okay. don't okay. like you. You are staying, right? You like okay. If well, uh, some of them, they I'm have also, to go, but yes. some other students are joining. So if we have questions, now would be a good time uh, before the break. Do you have questions? Look, I cannot put them back. You see? Yes, we have I a question. Put them back. You see? I cannot put them back. <laughs> oh, it's really crazy. Go ahead, go ahead. Look, so in they the antimatter factory. So, 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 so the concern is the antimatter factory. How do you keep the antimatter away from the matter so that it doesn't annihilate? Magnetic annihilate? field. That's the short answer. It's magnetic fields. Um, <laughs> magnetic. So, but it, it it raises an interesting question. So, uh, for those that are not familiar, the antimatter factory uh, oh. is the nickname we have for the antimatter decelerator, and there we do the opposite as in the rest of the LHC. We actually slow down particles. Again, using magnetic fields, that's a very much an approximation. But um, antimatter has electrical charge, so it is more or less straightforward to manipulate them using magnetic fields. That's the trap. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah. So we are showing now an image of a trap yeah. that we use to to capture or to yeah to to store the antimatter. Um, so one thing that, I, however, I will add is that you may have seen in the news recently that a result was published by the Alpha-G collaboration, which is one of the experiments at the AD, the Antimatter Decelerator. So they were able to measure the influence of gravity on antimatter. But in order to do that, they had to create antimatter that had no electrical charge. So if you think about how to do that, it might be difficult, right? All antimatter that we can easily create is going to have an electrical charge. So what they did is they had to first create anti-hydrogen atoms. So you have to take an anti-proton and an anti-electron and you have to make them uh, come together in an atom. And then you have to do that over and over and you have to store as many of them as you can, which is not that many. It's uh, still on the order of maybe a hundred or so of these atoms that you can actually produce at the time. And then you let them fall and you see if they fall up or they fall down or what direction they go. And you do a statistical analysis. Turns out they fall downwards, but you know, you don't know this until you try. Uh, but that's something that's interesting is in order to measure this effect, you really have to eliminate or not really eliminate them, the electrical uh, uh, charges, but you had to couple them so you have uh, neutral atoms. Other questions? Andres? We had another one, but they said you already answered. Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. uh, Andres, can I uh, just add something to your comment? Yes, Sonia, go ahead. That, that okay, that, that the measurement you were, you were talking about is another confirmation of the relativity theory. This was uh, expected by the relativity theory. So this is uh, really an important result. And uh, so I think uh, should be worthwhile to also to investigate in this uh, sense. Absolutely, and I may Sorry. also just add, it's a great example of physics that are that is done at CERN that has really nothing to do with the LHC. So I think most people maybe think that at CERN only the L the LHC is the only thing that's going on. CERN really hosts it's a it's a scientific a physics laboratory that hosts many different kind of experiments, and the LHC is just one of them. Andres. Go ahead, Sonia. Yeah, and so, okay, you are just putting on a, on a silver plate this. We also have astroparticles at CERN. <laughs> so we are, we have the control room of an experiment which is installed on the International Space Station. So you can do uh, physics in space, but can be connected. And it, it's another approach that you can use to understand uh, particles and their behavior in the, in space but that connects directly what what we are doing on uh, on accelerator so yes you are definitely right we do medical physics uh, we do um, also solid state physics uh, 
we do, as you said, uh, antimatter using a decelerator instead of an accelerator. And we collect data from space just uh, using uh, uh, a detector, which, is, uh, which was built here, actually, uh, but was uh, installed on the space station. Now, uh, I'm waiting for the elevator. And uh, just maybe what I, I would like to, uh, to add, uh, just uh, to end uh, only the information about this chain that I know that seems to be a game, but if you can uh, calibrate uh, each clip and you know exactly to how much uh, the intensity of the magnetic field that you have for each clip, you can have a rough idea of the magnetic field of CMS. So this has never been done. I always ask people to let <laughs> me try once. I don't know. Officially, I ask again. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Maybe it will happen so that I will know exactly how many clips uh, correspond to the magnetic field. So I go up now, and I reach you in the control room. It's OK? Sounds good. Thank you. So Bye. um I will give uh, everyone an opportunity to ask more questions. This is your chance. Uh, do you have any questions at all? Um, we have a question here. What happens if the elevator breaks and you need to go up? So there's a number of things. Um, we did briefly discuss, um, we will show a, a picture here. So you may recall that Sonia was talking about this red door that uh, if you open the door, you will interlock or you will abort the beam. So this um, door is, is right where we are pointing with the mouse here. Um, but maybe to make it clear, we can show the LHC tunnel itself. So of course, CMS, the Compact Muon Solenoid Experiment, is in the path of the LHC tunnel. And this door, uh, if you open it, it will abort the beam because it can lead you to the LHC tunnel. Uh, so that's one of the safety mechanisms, of course. But along the route, you can see hopefully from the mouse here that there is a path just away, just up and away from the uh, LHC tunnel itself, and we have an additional uh, small elevator. So this is would only be used in very specific and exceptional circumstances, but it is a way to go up uh, if the main elevator, elevator is broken. That said, if the main ele elevator breaks at any point in time, we will have somebody come and repair it uh, as soon as possible. So on the order of maybe a few hours, it will be, be fixed anyway. Oh, okay. And let's not forget that that we can still evacuate through the the LHC tunnel to the to the next uh, nearest access point, which is something like three kilometers in each direction. Uh, that's the really really last resort. We have yeah. never needed to use it. exactly. But these last resorts are, are you know, very specific uh, sort of safety. Related. I mean, if there's a, a safety incident, all of this is planned in advance, right? And there's a very thorough uh, plan A, plan B, plan C, plan D, and so on. So in any emergency you can think of, uh, there is preparation and there is a plan in place. Okay. Any other questions? Compared to the Earth, um, magnetic field, what is uh, the magnitude of the magnetic field that you have down there? So if I recall correctly, it's something like 200,000 times mm -hmm. stronger than the Earth, Earth magnetic field. Um, I don't know if there's a better comparison of what would be a strong magnetic field. So it's not as strong as uh, an MRI machine, for example, that can reach that's, six... That's in the same... It's in the same ballpark, but... Um, um, but that's, that's maybe one way you can get an impression of the strength. It's, it's a bit like MRI, um, some kind of medical imaging device will have a... Like three, three Tesla? 3.8 mm -hmm. is what we can generate. Yeah. The, the MRIs are around uh, three Tesla. This is 3.8. There are some MRIs with uh, 10 Tesla, however, for research and high resolution purposes. So this is something that, uh, 
I would say it's extremely strong, but not so much extremely strong. There are there are magnets. Uh, there are some some uh, 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 experimental high field magnets that go well beyond twenty teslas even, um, but they are they can produce it in a very very low very small volume. Yeah, the CMS now, magnet is six meters in inner diameter, so we have a quite uniform 3.8 Tesla in a very large volume. So it is very much a specialized uh, application. And there's really, I don't know how to, you know, it, it's really a one of a kind magnet. Uh, it's hard to say like it's the strongest magnetic this field. Is, by... This is the strongest with this volume. Mm -hmm. And I mean, it, it's, it's really impressive, right? I mean, we're talking about the energy stored in the magnet when it's operational is enough to melt like a hundred tons of gold. I don't remember. Two point two gigajoules. Two point two uh, gigajoules. I, I know. I know one, one information. This is something like the kinetic energy of a uh, B seven four seven. So and yeah, another impressive, oh. yeah, yes, another impressive, just to join the discussion, another impressive, impressive thing is uh, the current intensity inside this magnet. These 18,000, more than 80,000 amps is really something which is, uh, uh, it's huge. So, uh, because amps is already a big unit. And even in LHC, even if we have a, a stronger magnetic field, we are producing this magnetic field lower, only 13, I would say, 1,000 uh, amps. In, in a CMS, there are, I, I saw because uh, I saw measurements from uh, Noemi, she's with me, and she has shown me 18,130 amps. They're really huge, huge. <laughs> so I'm entering inside again to the control room. So we're happy Just to take uh, maybe one or two more questions, if there are any. <laughs> Uh, do you have any other questions? Yes, do you have one? No? Okay, so uh, Sonia is coming in. You can have uh, a brief look at the control room. Um, so, well, I can, I can quickly say that we are still um, sort of moving yes, in and getting used to the new control room. Uh, so yeah. we only moved in uh, maybe a month ago. So it's still a new control room for us, and um, it's still not quite finished. You can see there's ongoing work, um, but yeah, we're already we we have crew uh, a crew in the control room twenty four seven, and we operate as continuously as possible. Um, and yeah. Yes, I'm here. You see me? Yes. Okay. I Are can there show you. Are there people there twenty four seven? Can you say again, please? Yeah. 24 hours, seven days a week, there is someone there in this yes. control center. Yeah, so we have a shift yes. uh, sh change every eight hours since we have, we have three shifts per day. And uh, this is in part because of safety reasons, right? So we are operating a very sophisticated detector so there can be problems and we need to react immediately at, at, you know, at everything that comes up that can come up needs to be solved as quickly as possible. So yeah. There are eight hours of shift every, every time, okay? And um, yes, continuously, but this is how any any control room works uh, uh, in all uh, experiments. Uh, uh, any any experiment has a, its own organization, but the shifts, they are continuous. Now, if you want, I can show you just very quickly. There are specific uh, posts this is the technical shifter control. So you see, for example, there are nice to see the pictures of the elevator and other places where we were going through. And then we approach the post of the shift leader here. You can see here, okay, I would say is the captain of the crew, the shift leader, he enjoys to to manage, but also takes the responsibility if something happens. <laughs> Always not so nice. Then we have uh, the shifter for the data acquisition, the DAQ here, you see. Uh, of course, I think it's automatized, I would say, in the sense that you need you don't need to read the one number 
each time, okay? So you have alarms that are blinking and say, okay, something's going wrong. Here is also nice because sometimes, okay, there are some uh, short um, clips, uh, let's say uh, songs associated to uh, some, uh, uh, yeah, so sometimes, okay, now we, we, we don't have them, uh, uh, but I don't know if we can hear it. No, okay, we, we cannot ask her to produce, So, but I can tell you, okay, the, 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 the one that I like the most is when uh, there is the one of Queen, of course, because, <laughs> so we have, for example, when we, we want to stop, if I'm not wrong, if we want to stop the DRQ, so the data acquisition, there is, a, of course, a don't stop it now. <laughs> or uh, maybe if there is an interesting signal, a signal there is, a, it's a kind of magic, okay? So uh, you have uh, just this, because, you know, at the very end, uh, you, you should make uh, life also happy, not only to, to work and, and uh, see numbers. And here we have the post of the trigger that was described nicely by, by Andres. And then we have Andres here. And okay, I stop here. And uh, of course, Zoltan helping us. And Noemi, do you want to show you at a certain point? No? Yeah. Okay, <laughs> okay yes. <laughs> okay. So I I think, uh, are there other questions? So, do you have other questions? No, I just want to uh, thank you so much, Andreas. Sonia, Noemi, Zoltan for being with us today. Many of the things that we were discussing here in class, the, the students could see today live. So I think it made uh, everything way more meaningful and hopefully they can even at some point visit the CERN gateway there and mention that you had they had this visit here before. Yes. So thank you. Can, can we mm -hmm. give them a huge shout out? Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. And maybe consider, I guess you know that there are programs uh, to, to come here to make a trainship, uh, can be short, can be longer, uh, can be, there are some of them, uh, they are for high school students, uh, others are for, uh, let's say, when you are in the middle of your bachelor, etc., etc. Uh, I just say that, okay, you should give it a try to this kind of career. As you see, we have a have group people. here. Yeah, we have they a already group here who applied for being line for schools this year. So ah, we're yes. waiting for yes. like two uh, years, okay. something from I, You know, I, 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 I was uh, selecting uh, some of these, of these uh, proposals. There was one from Brazil. I don't know. I don't know if it was yours. <laughs> However, um, you are not supposed to talk about. No, no, but yes. I, I'm not saying that if I selected to okay. pass, I was so, just so, analog. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I was a selector. I said I said wrongly. I was uh, one of the person uh, who was uh, in the job to select, but uh, I cannot okay. mention it, of sure. course, if it was. Yeah, a, I saw also, that this year uh, also there were more than were, 400, yes, right? Exactly, more than 400 but, uh, proposals. Yeah, so exactly. In fact, uh, there were, they were uh, almost 40. I cannot really remember, frankly. Okay, you know. <laughs> I cannot really remember which one was selected. Okay. Mm, but however, yes, this one is a, is a chance. And then, of course, you can have uh, other uh, other possibilities also in the future. And uh, it's really nice to come here. So we wait for you. I don't know, yes. Anders. Yep. Okay. So yes, uh, if you get a chance to visit, if you get a, of course, if you're interested, you should apply. And keep in mind that it's not just all physics here. There's plenty of engineering that happens and much many, many opportunities. Uh, so keep an eye out for that, of course. Also no scientific uh, communication, press uh, office, uh, medicals, uh, also people for our restaurants. Uh, and from Brazil, I'm sure that we could eat very, very well. <laughs> very, very good food that we could have. So you. really, you can come sure. here, you will see. It's thank you so camp. much. All right, thank we you. hope to see you soon again. Bye. Thank Bye. you. Bye.